Hello. About one year ago I posted a video on why in my opinion the general approach of SimCity doesn't work. I have reconsidered since then and went out to actually try to make it work, not only on paper but as a prototype. If you have watched the mentioned clip you might have noticed that the assumption behind all um, of the back of the envelope calculations was that the sim traffic had the same properties as the real world traffic and changing that was the starting point to get a working agent simulation because if you replace the real world drivers with almost perfect drivers and modify the physics a little then you can get a lot more cars on your road. First, the spacing between cars in the real world is determined by their braking distance, which depends quadratic on their speed, which means the faster you go, the fewer cars fit on your road. Let's change that and make the braking distance and therefore the spacing linear with speed, like 30 km per hour is 30 meters, 60 km per hour is 60 meters. Secondly, that cars drive at marginally different and varying speeds in reality results in congestion seemingly out of nowhere, although the road is far from its theoretical capacity. If everyone was driving at the same speed, this wouldn't happen. And given a clear road, let's make all drivers go at the same top speed. Those two points might seem not like much, but by doing this I could increase road throughput by close to 200%. That in combination with lots of other smaller tweaks including adaptive time dilation led me to believe that giving the agent approach a go might be worth a try. The hardest problem when designing an infrastructure simulation like this is that virtually everything is connected with everything else that you can't comp compartmentalize your code without taking a performance hit. And obviously performance is very important if you don't want to end up with sim village. Also the iterative approach doesn't work here uh, because when you try to stepwise improve on your design by optimizing or exchanging single parts of the system you end up in blind alleys. It's a bit like uh, trying to fly over the English Channel. You build a ramp, buy a car and see how far that gets you. Maybe 200 meters, I don't know. Um, so you improve the engine, the aerodynamics and now you can jump maybe 400 meters. Next thing is strapping a rocket onto it and maybe then you can go a thousand meters. However, you will never morph your car into the plane that is needed to fulfill the original performance requirements to cross the channel. Uh, you have to scrap your original idea and think of a different approach. That is very time consuming in software development, so I spent quite a lot of evenings over a couple of months trying to think things through before actually using a computer. And the problems arising were different from what I was expecting. The two hardest were distributing the CPU load over multiple cores and having a memory structure that allows for very fast access to pathfinding data. The first problem comes down to what is known as the map coloring problem, where you color a map by a number of different colors without having two countries in the same color, well, bordering countries in the same color. The problem um, um, is solved in theory, but finding usable solutions to concrete maps is still not much fun. The second problem could be solved by using nasty untyped memory space and lots and lots of pointers and pointers to other pointers. It, it was horrible and at that point I switched RDEs and went to MS Visual Studio because um, MS Visual Studio has very good memory leak detection and there are no memory leaks um, left, but tracking them down was cruelsome. The framework itself is written in C++ and some of the performance dependent stuff is more more like C and the inner loops are partially in assembler. The little bit of GUI there is um, uses JScript. The framework um, is templated. Um, as you can see up left here that's the generic classes and what that means uh, to, to maybe to people who are not that familiar with C++ or, or with object oriented languages is that the same code can move cars as well as pedestrians or, or trains. I did not really test with pedestrians because that's the most simple case um, while cars are the hardest case but I did try um, trains mm, with the game prototype I did a couple of years ago and I just plugged in the U pathfinding code and uh, here you, s you see the results. It's basically working like Transport, tra transport Tycoon with uh, the signals and switches and um, well, you have to ignore the blockiness of the terrain because the implementation of the Pathfinder is independent from the geometry. The car simulation allows not quite for everything you can think of. There are limitations like the minimum distance between intersections, but I think you can model at least almost every intersection logic there is. Um, for example, here's a cloverleaf intersection and um, here's a circular traffic and here's something that I believe can pass as a Michigan left. Building works like this, you can drag roads and yes you can build curvy roads but it's tedious and um, the user interface really isn't very good. Imagine like Dwarf Fortress user interface but without the ease of use and not quite as intuitive. 
and you can build intersections that you can then configure. The white lines are the lane markings that show where a car can go and the axes you see correspond to uh, in which phases the signal on that lane is red or green. If it's green all the way there's just no signal like for example a dedicated left turn. You can also set the amount of time a signal stays green and you can coordinate different intersections. For scale testing, I'm using auto-generated grids with um, auto-generated intersections and those intersections then look like this. Uh, that works up to, I think I tested up to 60 lanes per road. The hard limit is 250-50 lanes um, per road and direction. Obviously there are still glitches in the car behavior and the animations are somewhat angular. Um, but that's not due to faults in the underlying architecture. You can see the cars are individually tracked and they can carry people or goods some, somewhere. They have a, a starting point and they have a destination and they're trying to reach that destination. And now I'm curious about something. I would like you to guess how many cars can be handled by my PC built in 2008 without the sim dropping below normal speed. That means you can not time accelerate anymore but you are still running at normal speed and not like in slow motion. There's one more recent part in my PC that's an SSD, but uh, that's not relevant for the performance in that case. For scale, as far as I know, SimCity 5 has a hard limit of 10,000 agents, so please please type what you believe can be handled uh, into the comment box below. Seriously, please do it. Maybe pause the video if you need some time to think. I really would like to know what the general perception of what's possible is and, and where the expectations are. Have you guessed? Please guess. Okay, um, I was pretty surprised because the program exceeded my expectations by quite a bit. I tested it up to 20,100,000 cars and that run for about two minutes and then my overclocked CPU shut off the PC. <laughs> well, hopefully that was some insight into what can actually be done and where in my opinion the expectations in terms of scale for the next SimCity-like game should be. Thank you very much for watching and bye.